The destruction and sacking of the city of Kalish Polish, Kalisha by German Empire troops took place from 2 August until the 22nd of August 1914 at the beginning of World War I. The event is also known as the Pogrom of Kalish or Poland's Louvain see Schrecklichkeit atrocities. On 13 February 1793, Kalish and the Kalish region became part of Prussia during the partition of Poland. After Napoleon's defeat on the Eastern Front in 1812, it was taken over by Imperial Russia, which subsequently controlled the city for more than 100 years. The German army invaded Kalish on 2 August 1914. The town was burnt down, only churches and public offices survived. A significant number of citizens were shot. Prior to the war, Kalish had 65,000 inhabitants. Afterwards, it was left with 5,000 inhabitants. Outbreak of World War I The Russians pull out The first inclination of the war reaching Kalish was when the nearby border with the German Empire was closed at Neuskalmierschitz and rail movements across the border to Germany were stopped. Russian officials began evacuating the city alongside military personnel. On August 2, 1914, at dawn, the Russian military retreated from the city without fighting, after setting fire to military warehouses near the railway station. It was set on fire as well as the trains and transport wagons. A civic committee was established by the citizens of the town which began to administer the city. Additionally, the civil guard was established to keep order, while workers tried to put the fire at the railway station out. The Germans move in First German soldiers appear Around 1400, on August 2, the first German patrols appeared along the railway tracks. As the patrols increased, crowds gathered. Altogether the atmosphere was neutral, some unfavorable comments could be heard from among the citizens of Kalish. When a German officer arrived, Mayor Bukowinski gave him the keys to the city as a symbolic gesture. After ensuring that there were no Russian forces present, the German patrols withdrew to Shipiorno. In later hours, other German soldiers started to arrive on bicycles. Many of them were Poles from the nearby town of Shieldburg, and there was no hostility between them and the local Polish population. The German soldiers of Polish extraction about 30 in number, quickly separated from the rest of the Germans and went to the market, where they engaged in conversation with the local population and drank beer with them. German soldiers remained separated and struggled to engage in conversations which were carried out in Polish. Arrival of the main German forces Only on the night of 2 and 3 of August around midnight, did the main German forces come from the 5th Company of the 155th Regiment of Infantry in Ostrowo. The commander, Captain Kield, demanded lodgings for his troops and summoned the mayor. On the same night, forces of Major Hermann Priusker came to the city from the 2nd Battalion of Infantry. Priusker immediately took over and named himself the Commandant. At the selection of quarters, Priusker showed great displeasure and demanded the building housing the Musical Society and Christian craftsmen in the city instead of the Russian military barracks. At dawn on 3 August, mortars were brought into the city. 
At the same time, Major Priesker started arguing with the city council, although they had fulfilled his every request. Some believed he was disappointed with the lack of resistance and the indifferent attitude to German soldiers by the Polish population, which had begun to establish personal connections with the ethnic Polish soldiers from the German-controlled part of the partitioned country. Some of those soldiers did not show any support for the war and even condemned the conflict. Topic. Executions and repression In the late evening, a single shot was heard, which began panic and confusion among the city population, it was followed by machine gun fire. After this short event, peace returned to the area. During the night the firing resumed, when German soldiers started to shoot at each other, probably thinking that they were surrounded by Russian forces. Although the civilians stayed at home, 21 of them and 6 soldiers were dead and 32 soldiers were wounded. Major Priesker claimed that it was the local population that carried out the shooting. On August 4, Priesker took six citizens as hostages, 50,000 rubles of retribution, a curfew, a ban on publishing newspapers, and threatened to take further hostages and executions. Despite this, the Germans continued with further repression and executions. Civilians were brutally beaten, often with rifle butts. At any sign of resistance, people were shoved against a wall and shot. Many executions happened near the hospital where wounded people were taken. Several corpses were left in the street. Pedestrians were mistreated and any signs of opposition were quelled with such brutality and under such conditions that there were cases where soldiers refused to follow the orders of their officers. Up to 20 people were murdered in this way. Topic. Shelling and raids into the city After taking their hostages with them, the Germans started to retreat from the city in late afternoon. An hour later, artillery fire was laid down on the city from nearby hills. It was very efficient as Kalish is located in a deep valley. Additionally, the Germans had ordered the day before that all citizens should illuminate their homes, which helped in directing the fire. This continued for several days, with the Germans staging short raids into the city. As the shelling started fires, general panic broke out, and even as the Germans threatened to kill anybody escaping, people tried to escape by whatever means they had. Large crowds of panic-stricken people, including children and the elderly with any possessions they could grab, were running from the city, which became almost deserted. On August 5, 10,000 people fled the shelled town. The Germans took additional hostages, mistreating them and even killing some. Only after the intervention of the Catholic Church, were some released and others sent to POW camps in Cottbus in Germany. Topic. Massacre of civilian population As the situation seemed to calm down, new forces from Saxony arrived, while Major Preuker's soldiers were withdrawn. Another incident happened on August 7 on Main Market Square, when a lone horse ran free. As a result, German soldiers started shooting in a disorganized way, which led to the death of some of them. Artillery was positioned within the city and the Germans fired at civilian buildings for over an hour. About 100 civilians died in this incident. The Germans searched for survivors and when they found them, they stabbed them to death with bayonets. During the afternoon, City Hall was set on fire, and officials executed. The Germans retreated and shooting began again, which continued overnight between 7 and 8 August. On Saturday morning, the Germans returned to the city, taking 800 men prisoner and executing 80 of them on a nearby hill. 
The following day, the Germans started to systematically burn down the city. It is mentioned that in cases where civilians tried to fight the fire, they were murdered by German soldiers. The shootings, murderers, plunder of shops and homes as well as the burning down of the whole city lasted until the 22nd of August, when the last home was set alight on Nowogradowska Street. The Polish press in all territories of partitions reported extensively on the event, some calling it monstrous madness, that is unbelievable. The damage in Kalish constituted 29,5% of the losses in the entire Congress Poland during World War I. The destruction has been compared to the massacre of Louvain, where a city was destroyed in similar manner by the Germans. Before the war Kalish had 65,000 citizens, after the war, there were only 5,000 left. Topic. See also Expulsion of Poles by Germany Planned destruction of Warsaw Rape of Belgium Schreckli Kate Mittelorafa Topic. Notes and references Inline Offline. Rotkowski. Spolachenstu Kalisha W. Latosh Pirwe Wojny Swiatave id Nyach Wyswolenia. Rosnik Kaliski, Vol. 3, 1970, p. 165 174. T. Zarebska. Spra odbudowi zabitkowego centrum Kalisha. Rosnik Kaliski Vol. 10, 1977, p. 121 177. C. Z. Luchak. G. Gospodars Nemik 1871 1949. Poznan 1984, p. 488. H. Batowski. Rosipad Ostro Wedgier 1914 1918. Krakow 1982, p. 19 J. Desmarist. La Grande Guerre 1914–1918. Paris 1978, p. 184 D. Guerre. Der Russische Imperialismus Politik 1860–1914. Göttingen 1977, p. 195 to 196. T. Nalich. Polska Organizacja Wojskowa 1914 to 1918. Wrocław 1984, pp. 13, 21. A. Garlicki. Józef Pilsudski 1867 to 1935. Warsaw 1990, pp. 163–176. A. Garlicki. Usradl obozu Belwajerskiego. Warsaw 1983, pp. 249–282. J. Krasuski, Historia Zeshi Niemiecic. Poznan 1986, p. 228. M. Milanarska. Proces Loka G. Kalisha W. 13 I. W. Pirwe Poloi 14 W. 18 Wikau Kalisha. Poznan 1960, Vol. 1, p. 108. J. A. Girovsky, Historia Polski 1764–1864. Warsaw 1983, p. 35, 101. E. Polanowski. Maria Dabrowska, W. Krani Gichinstwa i Miladashi. Poznan 1989, p. 204. M. Dabrowska, Noche i Dnie. Wyater W. Ozi, ch. 2. Warsaw 1972, p. 360. M. Dabrowska, Erzamayanam Dislam. 
Pisma Rosprazone, Volume 1, Krakow 1964, p. 95. Kalish 1914. Materially Srodlo Red. M. Lisitska I. K. Pollock, p. 3, Kalish 1980. M. Dabrowska. Perzagodi Chilowika Maslaysko. Varsava 1972p, 105. M. Rotkovska. Sprazdani z seshi popular nakave wdniu the 20th of October 1984 r. Sedem gziata roznika zebrzenia kalisha. Referat h Rutkowskiego. Roznik Kaliski Vol. 19, 1986, p. 329 L. J. Flockerzy, Poland S. Louvain. Documents on the Destruction of Kalish, August 1914. The Polish Review N. R. 4 1983, p. 73-88, also, H. Nowichik. Odwetza bunt wojeni. Poludniowa Wielkopolska 1989 NR3 and W. Sweetel G. Haskij. Poludniowa Wielkopolska 1989 NR4 J. Zakarzuska. Odbudowa Kalisha po Velkij Wojna. Kalish 1936, pp. 17, 18. Verzachnis der in August 1914 Abgebranten Grundstuki in Kalisch. Deutscher Kreische in Kalisch. Archewum Panstuau W. Kalizu, S. Y. G. N. 117, K. 302-306 H. Nowachik. Artikel 247 Traktatu Wurselskiego. Zemia Kalishka 1991 J. Yanchak. Stosunki Ludna Show. G. E. Kalisha. Poznan 1977, p. 332. Zabitki Urbanistiki i Architekturi w Polska. Odbudowa i Konservacja, Vol. 1, Miasta Historicians. Warsawa 1986, p. 168. Archiwum Panstuau W. Kalizu. Deutscher Kreische in Kalisch. Sygn. 117, K. 302, Verzachnis der I. M. August 1914 Abgebranten Grundstuck in Kalisch Spies Spalinich Niruchamashi W. Kalizu W. Sierpnu 1914 R. Topic. Sources and recommended reading L. J. Flockerzy. Poland's Louvain. Documents on the Destruction of Kalish, August 1914. The Polish Review N. R. 4 1983. Two photos documenting the scale of destruction of Kalish and following reconstruction. Noglish Chach Kalisha, Ku Vice Pamiace Pogromu Tutanskiego, Dokonanego Prezes Prusakau W. Sierpnu 1914 R. Bronisla Tomczyk Press, 1915